salmon. What would you like to drink? Zeppi, what are you having? Mm. For me, this Serono sour. Simone, sings as well the this Serono. Please can you make that two of these Serono sours? Three this Serono sour, please. What about you? I think you want to have a drink too. I can tell you a great story about this Serono. The story begins some 500 years ago in 1525, when a painter commissioned to embellish the sanctuary chose an exquisitely beautiful local innkeeper as his model. Look, it's her face portraying the Blessed Virgin Mary in this painting. To show her gratitude, she prepared a delicately fragrant amber-colored liqueur by steeping apricot kernels for a few days. Now, 500 years later, Di Sarono is still based on this original recipe. Anything we've forgotten? Yes, the role of the Reina family, owners of the land on which the sanctuary was originally built. Take a close look at this ancient altarpiece. It holds the family crest, the same you find on the Di Sarono label. Our general store had a pivotal role in the life of our town, but not only there, customers came from throughout the province. That's what made it famous. My grandmother worked at the cash register, while my grandfather would go to Milan by train to purchase our supplies. My own father got the idea to specialize in a particular product category. Spirits, actually. He got this idea back in 1934 or 35. A keen grasp of what's going on in the world around and where it's all leading is, I think, fundamental for the future of any company. Every bar around the world has tens, if not hundreds, of bottles lining its shelves. Some stand out more than others. Come with me, I'll show you what sets to throw them apart. The bottle reflects a fusion between a shape of U.S. origin and Murano glass from the city of Venice. The union of these two elements marked a compromise on the part of the Americans. For us, now the bottle encapsulates the same idea of interacting in harmony. It's there, in our bottle with the square stopper that identifies Di Serrano worldwide. Di Serrano's cocktail adventure began in the 1960s. During the golden age of Italian cinema, in this period, New Yorkers watched Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita and discovered Di Sarono, which they appreciated both straight up and on the rocks. In the 70s, the Godfather cocktail, blending Di Sarono and whiskey, became the top drink on the club circuit. Then in the 80s, Di Sarono became an even more indispensable product on cocktail bar shelves. And in the 90s, during the cocktail renaissance, Di Serrano figured prominently on some of the world's best cocktail menus, thanks to fresh twists on classic drinks, such as the Manhattan and Julep. Nowadays, in the new golden age of bartending, Di Serrano continues to appear in ever more complex cocktails in bars from London to Japan. Di Serrano mixa i gusti dal mondo. Well, it's not just a slogan. Thanks to Di Serrano's versatility, you can always come up with new combinations, helping you to put your imagination to work in meeting your customers' tastes. Who'd ever have thought that one liqueur could be used to make so many different cocktails? Di Serrano passes the test to perfection. That's why it's a cut above the rest. <laughs>